Adam, you left your socks on the floor again. You know I don't like picking up after you. Why are you such a slob? Uh, I just got a, I got a text from my boss and I, I forgot. Oh, maybe I should get your boss to send you a text about your socks. It's such a little thing. Seriously, I don't know what's wrong with you. You know what, if you just give me a little bit of time to come into the house and just relax a little bit instead of just jumping right on me and just nagging me, you know, maybe we don't have to argue about these little things. Great. So I get pushed around all day at work and then I get to come home and you call me a nag? <clears throat> you know what, I don't want to argue. So what am I supposed to do? Just tiptoe around your litter and not say anything? It's really hard to communicate effectively if you're sort of just kind of looking to make sure that you're, uh, you're, you're right and your partner acknowledges that. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, taught us that from the best of faith is mending relations. We may smile outside a lot, we may be respectful outside, we may be kind, but then when we come home, we're just frustrated and you're just yelling at home or these kind of things. Most of us know that good communication is the basis for a successful marriage. But we often forget that communication is also non-verbal. Paying attention to our spouses, being aware of what's important to them, and positive body language can have a profound impact on our partners. I know couples have good communication when I see them um, allow each other to finish what they have to talk about and not interrupt each other. The person who listens is the one who calmly sits there and then takes in the information and then responds. If your spouse is talking to you but you're sitting in the computer doing something, even if you are really listening, then it doesn't show that you're giving importance to what the person is saying. So facing that person face to face, giving them all of the attention, making eye contact, all these things are just as important as what you're about to say. When you come home, don't just say assalamu alaikum, but give a hug. You know, make some kind of physical contact, give a kiss, right? This is why it's from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to brush one's teeth before one goes home. So, because it is better for that love between the spouses. Participating in, in um, activities that your partner really enjoys um, is important to them. It could be social activities, uh, it could be academic or work activities. When you let the other person know that you know what their dreams are, you know what their hopes are, uh, then the person knows that you care. So if that's something important to that person and they know that you care about that, then that makes that person care about you. When couples disagree and argue, knowing when and how to communicate can be the difference between success or failure in your relationship. I know couples have good communication when I see one of the partners having the ability to have a soft startup. And what that means is that when you come into the issue, you don't lead with your top point. You come in and you say, listen, this happened, and when it happened, I felt this way. I'm not sure if you realized it at the time, but I'm wondering if we can do this differently. Oh, Adam, you left your socks on the floor again. Picking up after you bothers me. Uh, I got this last minute text from my boss, and. Sorry, I, f I forgot. Honey, I know. And I know it's a little thing, but it's important to me. Yeah, no, for sure. We can um, talk about it after dinner. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. If you start a discussion all upset and angry and approach it with a, a real aggressive or demanding style, that will put your partner on the defense. Um, and what comes back to you from them will be quite different. Try not to be critical. You're trying to come to a resolution in this process. Try not to be defensive. Again, you're trying to come to a resolution. One of the important things is to be able to survive the first 30 seconds of a conversation, and we do two things. The first thing that we do is we actually determine what is the emotional climate of what's happening between the, uh, between the two of us. And we do this unconsciously before we actually realize what's happening. The second thing that we do is we actually then pay attention to what is being said. Successful couples are able to survive the first 30 seconds. They don't launch into defensiveness, criticalness, counterattack, but they really sit back, they listen, and they keep themselves on the positive side of the emotions. This is my partner, this is my loving partner, bringing something to me. I also know 
when couples speak in the I language rather than in the you language. So rather than attacking each other, you did this, you did that, talking in terms of how they feel in response to something they didn't like. I felt like you don't care. I think you're not really listening to me. That makes it a big difference. Experts point to a key technique that can help lower the emotional temperature between spouses during arguments. The technique is called a repair attempt. A repair attempt is any effort on the part of one spouse or both to reach out to each other during a time of conflict or disagreement. Behaviors such as putting your hand on your uh, partner's hand or just saying, you know, I don't want to make this worse and let's, let's calm down here a bit. Some people will joke or they will do something that they will hug the other person that will just automatically diffuse the situation. One of my friends, what he and his wife figured out in the first year of marriage was any time things got tense, whoever would make the other person laugh first would get $5. A very simple one is that we pay attention, that I keep myself calm, that I sit down and perhaps lean into you, uh, giving you the sense that I am listening to everything that you have to say and that it is important. Your gesture may be verbal, it may be nonverbal, It may be with an activity, it may be a touch, a look, it may be a smile. It's a sign uh, for the couple that we're together in this and uh, that there's an emotional connection and there's um, a desire to communicate effectively and work together here. One of the best examples of verbal and non-verbal communication can be found in the etiquette of the Prophet Muhammad Peace and blessings be upon him. He was a very approachable person, very simple, very uh, humble. He was actually the embodiment of gentleness and kindness. He'd mention things that would lighten the atmosphere, that would make the other person laugh. He would do things with his, with his spouses that they really cared about. The Prophet, peace be upon him, used to always talk about, you know, say a good word, you know, give gifts. Be positive. Uh, um, you know, give glad tidings. Don't be negative. When he listened to others, he listened not only to what they said, but he listened to what feelings they were expressing with their heart. And so he spent more time listening to individuals than he did uh, talking to them. And that's very important. Negative speech can deeply wound our partners. To avoid hurting our loved ones, two things are especially important. Controlling our anger and having a strategy in place for when disagreements happen. Basically, you set up a game plan for a fight, for disagreements. So you say, okay, during a fight, what should we do? Once the devil is in the mix, uh, the emotions are starting to rise, we've already set up a solution. So if we have difficulty, we're going to sit down and we're going to discuss this. Some people, they just like to talk about it right away and resolve it. Other people, they need to go away for like two hours, go take a walk or take a drive. So once you have that game plan and both of you are aware of the other person's needs, then when the disagreement actually happens, then you know how to handle it. A lot of people say to one another when they are in conflict things that they never heard before. Why don't people come clean and say it when the, the, the waters are calm and, and you can solve more problems at that time? The Prophet ﷺ said, gentleness is not found in anything except that it makes it beautiful. And it is not taken out of anything except that it leaves it ugly. I'm not looking to win my point um, and or prove my partner wrong. I actually want us to come to come to a resolution on these issues and find a solution that makes our relationship the winner, not just you or me.